About 83% of you guys are not subscribed. Subscribing, clicking that like button, and commenting all help me out a lot in doing what I really want to do. Thank you guys so much for all your support. What is going on, guys? Rogue TCG here, bringing another Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG deck profile. Here is a Lunalite Level 4 Spam Turbo. Rank 4 Spam Turbo. Um, this is a deck um, I made out of one reason and one reason alone, and that is to prove that I'm right. Um, yeah. I, um, <laughs> I claimed that Lunalite was a good Rank 4 engine, and uh, this is a video to basically, I guess, support my claim? I don't know. Uh, I actually do think this deck is pretty neat, and I do like what I brewed here. So, I'm going to go by the card by card, and I'm going to show you some uh, test hands afterwards to show you like what this deck can actually put up. But I, th I believe this deck is actually not incompetent and can put up some very powerful boards that are very difficult to break under certain circumstances. So, that's not enough yapping for me. Let's get to the profile. We are playing Luna Lights. Uh, it is a little bit of an older deck. Uh, it centers around this card called Luna Light Kaleido Chick. Uh, at once per turn on Ignition, we can send a car, a Luna Light card from our deck to our graveyard for cost to have Luna Light's name become that card's name until the end of the turn. It doesn't have to be able to resolve, it just sends a card. And it's not a once per turn, which is great. Uh, unfortunately, Luna Lights don't really have too many great cards to send. Um, there are two um, good ones being Yellow Martin and Emerald Bird. Emerald Bird doesn't trigger from Kaleido Chick, but we have other ways to get this one to trigger. Uh, so we are only on uh, four Lunalite uh, main deck names um, because these are like the best ones. Um, so yeah, Kaleido Chick has an effect where if we banish it, we can um, prevent our opponent from interacting uh, in the battle phase. We're never gonna banish it for a fusion, so not really that relevant. Um, so are we typically what we're going to do is we're going to normal summon Kaleido Chick or special summon Kaleido Chick or whatever in order to send Yellow Martin to the graveyard. And Yellow Martin says if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can target a Luna Light card you control except for Yellow Martin. Bounce at the hand and if you do special summon Martin in a defense position, put Banish and it leaves the field. And if it's sent from to the graveyard by a card effect, we can add a Luna Light spell trap from our deck to our hand. A uh, little bit difficult to get that sent to the graveyard by a card effect unless we... Um, yeah, it, it, unless we use like Time Thief Redoer, it's not really the easiest thing to do to um, send this to the graveyard by a card effect. We are on one Lunalite Tiger because that's all we can play. Uh, we are never going to be normal summoning this. This is always going to be a pendulum scale. In the scale effect is once per turn, you can target a Lunalite monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but it cannot attack and its effects are negated, and it is destroyed in the end phase. Uh, notice that that is not a once per turn. It is also a face-up Lunalite card that doesn't require a normal or special summon. All it requires is a scale. Um, so the whole point of the deck, pretty much, is to orchestrate a situation where you have a Kaleido Chick on field, or a Yellow Martin in Graveyard, and a uh, Lunalite Tiger uh, in hand or on in scale, in order to go like, Tiger, bring back Kaleido Chick, Kaleido Chick effect, dump Martin, Martin effect, Bounce Tiger, uh, Xyz summon into something, detach an Xyz material, rescale Tiger, go Tiger, bring, bring back the Kaleido Chick, Kaleido Chick, dump another Martin. We can't use that Martin, but might as well deck them and get them out of there for future turns. Do you know what I mean? So uh, Tiger is incredible in this deck, and they would really like more, but I don't think, I don't know if more is really healthy for the game, especially given the card design behind Luna Light Tiger. And then I did mention Emerald Bird. Emerald Bird on normal or special can send a Luna Light card from our hand to the graveyard to draw a card. Uh, this is, can functionally be a different copy of Kaleido Chick if we open, like, I don't know, for example, Emerald Bird, Yellow Martin, Tiger. We could go Emerald Bird, Pitch Martin, draw a card. Um, so I'm not the worst. And the Emerald Bird is sent to the graveyard by a card effect. We can target one level four lower Luna Light monster that's banished or in our graveyard, except for Mar uh, Emerald Bird and then special summon in defense position, but negate its effects. Uh, so it can grab back our banished uh, Luna Lights too. However, um, it is nice recursion, especially since uh, I can bring back a level four, but it needs to be sent to graveyard by a card effect and not for cost, uh, which Kaleido Chick does. So it's a little bit more situational. Uh, you notice these next couple cards are not Luna Lights. Um, the whole point of this deck is to make rank fours as uh, efficiently as possible. 
So we are playing as many cards in order to make sure we can make rank fours as efficiently as possible. Another thing with this deck is we are playing Protoss, a little spoiler, we're playing Protoss, so we need different attributes. So we need different attribute extenders in order to make Protoss uh, because almost all the Lunar Lights are dark. Um, so for different attribute extenders, we're on one ZS extended stage. Uh, it's a light, uh, you control no more cards, you can special from your hand. So it's a free extender. So nothing really to write home about. It's just the level four light extender that specials itself. We are on double Vanquish Soul Pantera. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, you can special summon this card from your hand. That is all you have to read. It is an Earth 1700 Beast Warrior. This is probably one of the better extenders because it is a Beast Warrior, so we can use it to go into Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Tiger King, which can grab Tanky, which can then grab Tiger. So if we can manage to get two uh, Beast Warriors on field, we can always guarantee access to Tiger via Tanky, so that's always really good. And then we are on Double Mothman. Uh, this is a card that can send cards from uh, hand to graveyard. Um, the danger, even if it's pitched, we can send cards from hand to graveyard, which is really important given our spell and trap situation, as well as given what our monsters look like. Sending cards from our hand to the graveyard is quite good in this deck. Martin wants to be in graveyard. Emerald Bird, if we can send it for effect, really good to be sending to graveyard. Even Mothman's decent. We don't have any fusions for um, Sheeran, but uh, Zephros, really good. Phantom Knights. Decent. Luna Light Perfume. Crazy. Like, even Fog Blades. Uh, Serenade Dance. Like, all great cards you want to send to the graveyard. Next, I did mention it. We are on one tier limit Sheeran. Uh, we can use this to basically pitch a monster we want in the graveyard and then mill some additional cards in order to get a free extender. That's a four. Uh, milling cards in this deck, like I mentioned just a second ago. Really good. Uh, I'm going to scare quickly to tell you why. Uh, I'm going to read two of the main cards we want to mill. Luna Light Perfume. If it's in our graveyard, we can discard a card to add a Luna Light monster from our deck to our hand. Another way to get to Tiger. And then Serenade Dance, we can, uh, if it's in our graveyard, we can banish it from our graveyard, discard a card, sorry, send a card from our hand to the graveyard, and then special a Luna Light monster from our deck. And keep in mind that sending hand from hand to graveyard is for card effect. Um, so this one will also trigger Emerald Bird, as well as something, something like Kaleido Chick out of deck. Um, so we have multiple really good discards in order to, or mills even, in order to get advantage that way. All these next cards that I'm going to be covering with you are all going to be tutorable via extra deck monsters. These next monsters I'm about to cover are all going to be tutorable via extra deck monsters, meaning we can grab them from deck one way or another uh, via a card in our extra deck, namely Raid Raptor Force Strix, Infernal Flame Banshee, or... Um, even Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. We do also have some other cards like Tenki, which is searchable with Tiger King. We have our Armored XCs that's searchable with Armor Fortress. Uh, so it's not like we don't have other cards, but uh, these are the monster ones. So first off, we are on one Raid Raptor Seeing Lanius. So we control a face of XCs. We can just special from hand. It's a free extender if we have an XCs. It's not the worst if we draw it, if those lines we can make an XCs. And I am trying to play two of a searchable card for each of... Um, the cards I just mentioned, um, just to make sure that if we draw one, it can still find a purpose in searching another one most of the time. The secondary uh, search target for four strikes is going to be Zephros. Uh, Zephros is very good in this deck in order to abuse that tiger more because it's a card that uh, Zephros can bounce in order to get an extra activation of tiger. Uh, then for our uh, Banshee targets, we're on one Inferno in order to trigger the Banshee being banished and special summoning itself again, as well as being an extender in case we draw our Nemesis Flag. Nemesis Flag, uh, we can set up using Phantom Knight of Rusty Bardish, banishing our Phantom Knight of Ancient Cloak or our Silent Foods in order to get a banished card in order to summon the Nemesis Flag. And then our Nemesis Flag can grab ourselves our Arc Nemesis Protoss, and in this deck, we can pretty uh, realistically choose between one of four attributes. We can either end on a light link monster with Bujinki Ahashima, so we can choose light. We're always going to have dark because Protoss itself is going to be a dark. Uh, we are always pretty much going to have a fire because our, our Banshee is going to bring itself back. As well as we're probably going to end with the flag on field unless we use it as a link material. And then we have our, pretty much our choice between water or wind because we're either going to end with Xyz Armor Fortress. Abyss Dweller, and if we end with Fortress, we're planning on probably going to Dark Knight Lancer, or we're going to end on Appalosa. Um, 
And then I did mention already, Cloak is here to grab either Silent Boots or our Shade Brigadine. Silent Boots for a Link Extender, Shade Brigadine for a level 4 Extender. And then Boots is here to grab Fog Blade for extra interaction. Uh, Tanky can basically search any Beast Warrior. Foolish Burial is good for sending stuff like the Zephyros or even stuff like Emerald Bird since it sends for card effect. We're on two Foolish Burial goods because we really need to be seeing Tiger. So this is just another way to get Perfume in Graveyard to try and get to Tiger. We are on triple perfume because it also has the first effect to just be a monster reborn uh and it's not once per turn for any of its effects um so it's just very very strong we're on one serenade dance uh this one is a once per turn and this one we probably just want to send to graveyard with foolish burial goods for hand traps we're on called by triple tack and then uh we're on double droplet for non-engine i already mentioned full armor xc's shade brigading and we're on triple fog blade that's it for the main deck nice clean 40. On to the extra, we're on one Bujinki Ahashima. It needs two monsters at the same level, can't be used as Link material, you can use each of the following effects of Ahashima once per turn. If it's Link someone who can special summon two monsters at the same level, one from hand, one from grave, negates effects, and immediately after this effect resolves, XC is summoned using those monsters. It's a great way to get cards out of our hand that we don't really have a means of special summoning after we've already normaled like stuff like Zephyros. We're on one IP Mascarena, one SP Little Knight, one Dark to Dark Charmer Gloomy, one Phantom Knights of Rusty Barge, and one Apollosa Bow of the Goddess for our Link monsters. We can kind of pivot through these pretty easily while we're comboing. However, the more important part of the deck is our rank fours. We're on one Forestrix. This can grab, again, one of the two extenders. We are on one Banshee. We are on one Brotherhood of the Fire Fist of Tiger King. We're on one Abyss Dweller. We ideally want to be ending on this in order to basically floodgate our opponent out. And this is one of the benefits that Luna Light specifically has is they have a, the ability to go into Rusty Bardish, but also have the ability to not necessarily dark lock themselves or necessarily lock themselves like some other decks do, like Math Mech Cybers locked itself. So this deck doesn't lock you um, necessarily, this actually doesn't even lock you, period. There's, I don't think there's any locks in this deck, except for, of course, the Arc Nemesis Protos. That is a lock, but not against you, just your opponent. We're on one plan B, just in case things go awry. We're on one tanky free tuber. We can either hard make it or we can make it with a shade brigadine to get that good effect. One Xyz Armor Fortress, just to slap on top of the four strikes or flame banshee. We are on one full armor dark knight lancer in order to basically rank this guy up. And then of course, since we're on so many Xyz, we're on one design arsenal of sky thunder. Uh, an additional engine we could be running instead of flag protos, we could be running corridor colossus. It does mean we don't have to really worry about attributes in Graveyard, so the deck probably would look a little bit different and probably know is the SSM the Sage, unfortunately. Um, but um, yeah, that's about it for the profile. I know initially it looks kind of jank, but I honestly think this deck is not half bad. I think this deck is pretty competent uh, and can do its mainline strategy more often than not. So before I let, leave you guys, I'm going to be showing you a handful of games without any commentary.
you guys so much for watching the video. If you wanted to talk to more Yu-Gi-Oh players like yourself, I would highly recommend checking out our Discord server. Link is going to be in the description as well as the QR code on screen. We do talk somewhat frequently about Yu-Gi-Oh and the current meta, so I would really enjoy to see you there. As well as we do recently now have channel memberships available on our YouTube channel where we have three different tiers. We have Super Supporter at $2 a month where you get loyalty badges, emojis, guaranteed comment responses, a shout out at the end of every video, as well as access to the members only Discord channel where you get early sneak peeks at future videos. There is the Giga Supporter at $5 a month where you have early access to all new videos about a day or two before they go up as well as all the previous offers. And for $15 a month, we do have our final tier, which is going to be Femboy Fanatic. You get a guaranteed customized video every single month, as well as one hour of my time. Could be for anything you'd like. You want a duel? Absolutely. You want me to help build the deck? Absolutely. You want to play some Helldivers? Sure. I'll do anything for an hour once a month. But supporting does help me out quite a lot, and it does help me produce all of these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Bye-bye.